there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search throughout eternity long and find there is none like you. None like you. No, 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 no. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search throughout eternity. your houses just know this oh there's nobody like our God nobody like our God hey hey there is none like rain Jesus rain we need you to rain Jesus rain why? Because you're king of Zion, Jude, Judah's lion. Somebody needs you to reign, Jesus, reign. Thank God for the rain. Come on. Shower down, Lord God. Rain on us. Breathe on us. Be all that we need in this hour. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Rhonda. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The one thing that I know for sure is that the word of the Lord and the worship of the Lord uh, will never be stopped. Uh, while we've had our various technical difficulties and all of that, uh, listen, uh, I kind of feel like it is when you have cable, uh, when you have direct TV, uh, and there comes a storm, uh, and then in the storm, there is all kind of fuzz on your TV and the sound goes out. Uh, but we don't get up and leave the house, do we? Because it's a storm. Right? We just stay and wait for the picture to become clear again. I want you to know that we just need to wait for the picture, come on now, and the sound to be clear again. And that's what happens to us in storms. Uh, that's what happens to us in crises. Amen? We have to just wait until the sky clears again, and God will allow us to come out. So listen, with all of everything that's going on, I am grateful unto God. This is still the day that the Lord has made. I'm still going to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, what a joy to be with you on this Sunday. 
I can't tell you how excited we are to continue uh, in our Easter tide season. But before I get into that, won't you just help me right where you are? Thank Pastor Christian Cheers for that amazing message on last week. Just so proud of him, amen, and grateful to have him on our team, amen. Listen, I'm going to back into this sermon today. Uh, probably not going to preach it like I usually preach it, you know, probably just not going to read all the way through and then, you know, give you a few points and let you, oh, I'm sorry, I said go home. Ha, you're already there, aren't you? Yeah. So anyway, uh, stay, stay home. Okay, okay. We're having fun here and we're having fun in the Lord, right? So listen, we're in Easter time. We're always in seasons and Easter tide began with Resurrection Sunday and ends on May 31st, which is Pentecost Sunday. We're always going through a season. Uh, Pentecost, when we celebrate that Jesus ascended into heaven, right? And then the Holy Spirit descended into the earth realm. We're always going in and out of seasons. What we're in right now is a season. I want you to know that. And, and after this, another season will begin. One of the things, one of the angst in preaching uh, is that there are liturgical seasons that are worthy of preaching to, but there are also global crisis seasons that are worthy of preaching about. Uh, so about six weeks ago, I started off with, we were excited, don't panic, uh, Jesus is on board, right? Uh, uh, and that encouraged us to stay the course because we thought we were going to be in this thing about a week or two. Uh, and then I tried to preach to our level of uncertainty, right? Uh, what to do when you don't know what to do. I uh, did that for two weeks. Uh, and then for um, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we gave you two installments of uh, we're coming out of this right? Uh, we were excited about that because we were hoping at that point that we were going to peak soon uh, and that this thing would be over. But then Pastor Christian came along and told us at the very beginning of the message, I got this on lock, only to discover in conclusion that the only one that has things in total control is our great God. Uh, and so uh, today, uh, I want to speak to where we are right now. I want to speak to the season of Eastertide, and I want to speak to the season of what we're going through right now. It's no denying it. We are in a pandemic, uh, and some of us may be tempted to panic, but I just want to speak to, quite honestly, what we're feeling and what we're thinking. And I found a character in the Bible that's probably going to help us express, my God, some of the things that we've been going through. Uh, so I want to talk about and present to us today, probably in three installments, uh, a dude by the name of Simon Peter. Uh, and he's going to help us uh, kind of lift out and lift up some of the angst that we are going through. So why don't you pray with me? And we'll get into, amen, the mix of this message. Gracious God, we love you, and we thank you, and we honor you. Ah, oh, we want to, God, preach a message of hope and preach a message of courage and enlightenment and empowerment. God, I also want to preach a message that's real, that hits the spot of where we are. Some of it is lamentation and and some of it may be complaint, but God, at the end of this, we want to get to the place, God, where we are praising you for things being as well as they are. And so, God, would you take my feeble voice and my feeble body, oh God, and allow me to preach a word that penetrates to the core, that penetrates the heart, that penetrates the soul. You said your word is a two-edged sword cutting even to the marrow. Oh, God, but making us better once it's through with us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you, oh, God, are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Why don't you stand? 
for the reading of the word. That's right. You've been sitting all week. You've been sitting all week. Won't you just stand for the reading of the word right where you are? I want to take us first to Matthew 16. We're going to have three passages of scripture. Matthew 16, 13 through 17. Get your Bible. Get your devices. Amen. Matthew 16, 13 through 17. I want us to see and embody who this person is. I want us to see who he was when Jesus first called him. We're going to be talking about Simon. Uh, we're going to be talking about a guy who was a fisherman. And we're going to be talking about a guy uh, who was uh, kind of interested in meeting the Messiah. Uh, but his brother Andrew was the one that would have to say, hey, we've seen the Messiah. Come on and follow us. We're going to talk about a guy that would rather fight than switch for those of you uh, who are a little bit uh, my age and a little bit older. He, he was the kind of guy uh, who would rather uh, talk first and think later. Uh, so let's get into it. Matthew 16, 13 through 17. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Here we go. I want you to take a look at this. Simon Peter, remember those two names. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Best, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. Watch the name change. He was Simon at first. Don't write that down. He was Simon at first. And then when he gets heavenly revelation as to who Jesus really is, then Jesus then changes his name. He says, I tell you now, you are Peter. And on this rock, on this revelation, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of hell will not prevail, will not overcome it. So now do we see who we're dealing with? We're dealing with a brother by the name of Simon. We're dealing with a brother uh, who is just a regular guy. He's a regular fisherman. Uh, he is one of those who's waiting on the revolution. He's waiting on this Messiah uh, who will come and tear up the Roman Empire, overthrow the Roman Empire, so that finally those who have been enslaved can be in charge. That's what Peter's been waiting on. All right, here we go. Luke 22, 31 through 34. Luke 22, 31 through 34. I'll give you a moment to get there. Remember, Simon gets heavenly revelation, and then his name is changed to Peter. But look what happens after Jesus renames him. Take a look at Luke 22, 31 through 34. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. He's desired to have you. But I have prayed for you, Simon. Are y'all hearing what Jesus is calling him? But I pray for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, when you have been converted, I need you to strengthen your brothers. Look at this. He says, but I pray for you, Simon, that your faith won't fail. And when you are converted, strengthen your brothers. Listen, listen, this is what Simon says. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. In other words, uh, Simon was saying, I'm your ride or die. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, watch this. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you even know me. Hmm. Let's go to Luke 22, 54 through 62. And these will be the passages that we'll use for the next couple of installments. Then seizing him, 
they led him. They led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. We're talking about Jesus now. They seized Jesus. They led Jesus away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. This was the one who said, I'll go with you to prison and even to death. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. Stay with me, we're almost through. She looked closely in him and says, this man was with him. But Peter denied it, number one. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Uh, in some other synoptic gospels, it said Peter began to curse. He had a curse and anointing, uh-huh. Peter began to curse and says, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned, Jesus turned, and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny knowing me three times. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. Our Semitic premise is found in that 61st and 67 verses. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the Lord, what the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me that you know me three times. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. For the next few moments that I was together, I want to entitle this three-part series, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this, but the rest of that title is, I didn't sign up for this, but I'm built for it. Come on, I, I, need, I, come on, I need you to encourage yourself. I didn't sign up for this, but I'm built for it. Come on now, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Simon is in a pickle. Once again, Simon has been waiting for the downfall of the Roman Empire. Uh, he has tired of the countless uh, press conferences that uh, mislead people and tell them to do things that are detrimental to them. He was tired of the Roman Empire uh, making everything about a campaign speech. And rather than looking uh, for what was good for the people, they were looking what was good for big corporations. He was, he was tired and he was waiting for the day when this uh, spoken of, this prophesied Messiah uh, would come and overthrow the Roman Empire. That's what Simon was waiting on. That's what Simon was waiting on. And here's the thing. Simon was a fisherman, and Simon wasn't bothered about looking for the Messiah. He said, hey, when the Messiah shows up, holler at a brother. Well, Andrew, his brother, sees Jesus and says, there goes the Messiah. So he runs back and he gets his brother Simon. Simon, we have found the Lord. Okay, Simon says, all right, it's on and popping now. Let's get it going because I am tired of what's going on with the Roman Empire. Well, Simon begins to check out this Jesus. He doesn't look like a soldier. In fact, somebody says he's a carpenter's son. What kind of man is going to go and overthrow the Roman government with a hammer and a nail? Hmm. But Simon stays with him. And Simon begins to uh, uh, learn of Jesus and follow Jesus. But Simon is always bumping his head. He's always saying the wrong thing at the wrong time because he's looking for a quick fix. Simon is looking for something that will what? Protect his body, uh, protect his position. Uh, but he wasn't planning on doing any soul work. Not S-O-U-L work. Much like many of us, 
Come on now, we've been, we've been, we've been Simon. Uh, because now, while we have confessed that we know that Jesus is Lord, uh, we've been praising, uh, we've been waiting, and for the first few weeks we were doing good. Our Peter was showing. Uh, our, our one that Jesus commended uh, was showing. Watch this, watch this. Uh, but, 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 but here is the truth. Uh, Simon can only uh, hold out for so long because Simon was his former identity. Simon was his former personality. Peter was his God given name. Peter was the anointed name of Simon, but the truth of the matter is, even though he became Peter, Simon never disappeared. And we all have a little Simon mm -hmm, and a little Peter on the inside of us. And the truth of the matter is we've been doing great those first couple of weeks. Oh, I can do this. This is like a vacation. This is great. No problem. Uh, we were still going to the stores. We were still shopping. And everything was going okay. Uh, but then there's this third week. Oh, oh, okay. All right, all right. Uh, wow, I got a pink slip today. Uh, and I'm not sure what this means. How long am I going to be? out of work now? Uh, what does this really mean for me? Wait a minute. How many people are dying? Wait, wait. You mean to tell me that, that New York uh, is on lockdown and not only New York but California and now Detroit? Wait, what's going on? And now it's right here in my backyard. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this. Uh, because, you know, I'm real good as long as I can walk into the sanctuary and lift my hands and be in my regular seat and all that. But watching worship on a laptop, watching worship on TV, yeah, I didn't sign up for this. But, 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 but take a look at it. Take a look at it. The reason why I gave us uh, whom Jesus had called Peter out to be so that we would not give up, come on now, on whom God has created us to be. And somehow we've got to dig deep and find that person again because your Simon is showing. Jesus gets to Luke 22 after he and Peter have been traveling a while and he says, Simon? Watch it. Anytime you see names repeated, anytime you see phrases repeated, pay attention. God is trying to make a point. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. I mean, rip you to shreds, Simon. He's not after Peter because he knows Peter, Petros, the rock, is strong. He's after Simon, the one that will curse you out at the drop of a hat. He's after Simon, the one that'll cut your ear off with a sword. He's after Simon that'll say, oh, forget this. I didn't sign up for this. I am out of here. He's after that one. And I want to caution us today to get in contact with our Simon because who Satan is trying to discourage at this point is Simon. Who he's trying to throw off track is Simon because he knows if he can get Simon, he may be able to injure Peter. I'm I, I hope I'm trying to make it plain. I've got, I've got two more installments to do this. But he says, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, to mess up your witness. Come on now, Be because here is the truth. Here is the truth. Simon is okay as long as he thinks he's going to get what he wants. Simon is okay as long as he knows that we're still going to overthrow the Roman Empire, right? You know, as long as we know that come November, right, uh, this guy that we hate to see every day, he's going to be out. I'm going to hang in there as long as I think there is a payday for me. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. He's desired to have me. And this is Simon. This is Simon talking. Simon is thinking uh, that he is strong. Simon is thinking that he's courageous. He says, Jesus, listen, if everybody leaves you, I'll be right here. I'll go with you to prison. I'll go with you to death. He says, listen, I am down with it. He said, I signed up for this. Where is the fight? How many of us mid-March were good? Yeah, 
Because March 15th was our last service here in the sanctuary. Huh? And, and, and oh, we were fired up. We had to tell me, oh, wow, a couple of weeks. Rev, we can ride this out. We Come on, we, we'll, we'll go with you two weeks. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll even hang out in the house. Uh, but what happens when you've watched everything on Netflix? I wish I had some help here. What happens when you have eaten everything that you like to eat? Uh, and everything begins to taste the same. And then you got a little tickle in your throat and you're not sure uh, if it's just a tickle in your throat or if it's COVID-19. What happens when you begin to question? And oh God, those kids, those kids are at home. And, and I barely got through school myself. You you want me to what uh, be a principal and be a teacher I was down for that for two weeks but come on now it's been about seven weeks I didn't sign up for this didn't sign up for this I ain't no math teacher I, I'm not an English teacher come on now I'm not even a disciplinarian that's why I was sending them to school to begin with so that somebody else could deal with what I couldn't deal with I didn't sign up for this only reason why the marriage was working can I just go there only reason why the marriage was working to begin with is because we worked 12 hours and our shifts were opposite each other so we really didn't have to see each other and so it worked well but I didn't sign up for this come on now to be in the household with him and with her 24 hours 24 7. I didn't sign up for this Got to wear a mask and got to wear gloves and all the ways it's disrupted my life. Come on. I was planning on, and we can talk to some young folk out there. I was planning on graduating and I had my prom dress and I had my tuxedo and all of that. And I had the stretch limo reserve. This was going to be my year. But I didn't sign up for this. Come on. I finally made the grades I needed to make. I finally got my college worked out and I may not be able to start in the fall. What? didn't sign up for this oh God what you doing what you up to C come, come on now and, and, and Simon is hearing the warning Simon there's gonna come a time there's gonna come a situation there's gonna come a season where you're not gonna be and act as strong as you say you are and I'm trying to give you a fair warning now. Satan's behind it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to get sick who were healthy. People are going to die that you thought would be with you for the rest of your life. And you didn't sign up for any of this. But Simon, I prayed for you. I wish I had some help here. Uh, you are not in this thing by yourself. I know you feel lonely. I know you feel upset. I know you feel abandoned. I know you feel isolated. I know you didn't sign up for this, but you're built for it. <laughs> you're stronger than you think you are. You've got more on the inside of you than you think you are. Greater is he, come on now, that's in you than he that is in the world. Simon, I need you to get your intestinal fortitude. I need you to gird up your loins and come on, get with me. I pray for you that your faith won't fail. <laughs> and then when you come back to your senses, when you get back in touch with reality, I'm going to need you, come on now, to strengthen your brothers. Because Peter, the rock, you're the strong one. How many of you <laughs> uh, didn't take heed to the warning? Jesus told you in your prayer time, it's a storm out on the ocean. <laughs> and it's headed this old way. <laughs> and if your soul ain't anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. I wish, <laughs> I wish I had some help here. Drift away, Lord. Drift away. Certainly your soul will drift away if you're not anchored in Jesus. Yeah, your meditation time tried to tell you there's a storm brewing. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ignored the reports. We told you every week, listen, something's coming down the pike. Elbow bump people, put on your mask, take your vitamin C, get you some Sambacol with black elderberry, all of that, and you ignored it. And now, and now, it's mandatory that you wear a mask. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you don't have. 
have the mobility uh, that you had. And you said, for God I live and God I'll die. And I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. No weapon formed against me will prosper. But it's been seven weeks, Reverend. And I can quote scripture only so long. Talk about this to Simon and me now. Because right now, Simon wants to drink. I wish I had some help here. Simon wants to watch some porn. Who am I talking to out here? Uh, Simon wants to curse somebody out. Simon wants to go off on somebody. Simon wants to fist. Come on. Some, Simon says, I didn't sign up for this. Come on. Because Simon now, I wish I had some help here, uh, is kind of losing it. He, he has more than cabin fever. Maybe I can talk to the Simoninas uh, on the line. Uh, uh, this ain't about gender. This is Simon here. But is there a Simon out there or a Simonina out there that the stuff, come on now, you said you were through with. It's beginning to look a little good now. Uh, all the stuff that you suppressed. Right? All the stuff that you didn't have to deal with because you were busy. Right? But now the walls are closing in. And all the stuff that you had been in denial about is now in front of your face. Come on, you can't avoid it now. You've suppressed it and pushed it down, but now it's rising to the top. Simon, what you gonna do? Yeah, you, you finally got a deal. Come on, with that childhood stuff because you can't go anywhere. You, you can't drink it away and you can't eat it away and you can't party it away and you can't sex it away and you can't drug it away. Simon, I prayed for you. I know you don't think you, I, you don't think that you're built for this, but you've got something on the inside of you that's going to help you make it all the way through this. Wish I had some help here. We got, we got two other installments, but I just want to come on, give voice to what you may be feeling. I want to give credence to what you may be going through because it's been seven weeks and God dog, Reverend, uh, what you expect me to do? I've watched you, yep. I've watched worship, but my mind is distracted. Stuff is going on in the kitchen and stuff is going on in the bedroom and I'm trying to focus on the Word, but it's just something that won't let me focus in I'm trying to worship and praise with Rhonda now but it's just something that won't let me get all the way in I've got to get out of here if I don't get out of here I'm going to lose my my Come on, I'm going on the second month that I hadn't been able to pay my rent. I was doing good. I was doing well. But now I don't have any income and not any fault of my own. I didn't get fired. I got sidelined by a virus. Invisible enemy. Can't fight it with bullets or guns. Don't know where it is. It could be on my left and could be on my right. Could be above me or below me. I don't know, but I didn't sign up for this. And that when you thought you were strong, that when you thought you were fortified, that what you thought, come on now, you could overcome is now beginning to get to you. Somebody yelled out in the back, don't push me cause I'm close to the edge I'm just trying not to lose my head it's like a jungle sometimes uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. come on come on here is anybody out there feeling like that that I'm almost to the edge I'm almost to the edge come on now but can I tell somebody if you're not living on the edge you're taking up too much space I, I want to help somebody here. We're meant to live on the edge because at the edge is where we find ourselves. At the edge is where, come on now, we meet Jesus for who he really is. Am I talking to anybody in here? You are built for this. Uh, 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 Jesus takes Peter. Simon Peter to the garden. <laughs> uh, he says, watch with me for one hour. 
That, that, that's all I need. Watch with me for one hour. That's, that, that's all. I, I, I've got some heaviness going on. I, I know. I know I was built for this. I know I was born for this, but it's heavy on me right now because my humanity doesn't want to die, but my divinity says, go ahead. Uh, uh, goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is praying, and as much as Peter said, I'll go with you to prison and even to death. Simon is sleepy. <laughs> I wish, I wish y'all could see this whole dichotomy, this parallel between Simon and Peter. Simon is sleepy. Peter, come on, is doing his best to stay strong and stay up and live up to his name. Simon is sleepy. Falls to sleep on his buddy. Jesus goes back two more times. And each time, oh, Simon Peter falls asleep. Peter had the best intentions, but, but Simon was all flesh. And he said, this ain't what I signed up for. When we, when we finally, come on down, when we finally go, come on, triumph over these chumps. They come. It's where we find ourselves in Luke 22. They come and arrest Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Weren't you the dude that called out demons? Come on, weren't you the dude that opened up blinded eyes? Weren't you the dude that raised Lazarus from the dead? Come on, where's all that stuff now? I know some of you are asking that. Come on, God. You, you, you've been strong and mighty in my life. Where are you now? Why don't you tell why don't you take care of this COVID-19? Why, why, why don't you just stop it? Is anybody other than me? Come on now, asking God these questions. Well, what, what are you trying to prove, God? How many more people have to die? And it seems as if, come on, can I just real be, be, be honest? Don't, don't hold it against me as a pastor. It seems as if the bad people are still living and the good people are dying. Can I just be honest up in here? Can, can I just be honest? Up in here, come on now, people's aunties and, and uncles and, and grandmamas and, and granddaddies and husbands and wives who love you, God. Anybody in here talking to God like that other than me? Who love you, God, who went to church, who served you. And come on now, the COVID virus. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. I hadn't planned on doing any soul work. In this season, I wasn't planning on trying to get closer to you because I figured I was as close to you as I needed to be. Come on now, in order to get by, you know, a couple hours in church on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had enough sanctification for that. I thought I had enough anointing for that. But this thing is making me look at myself thing is making me examine my relationship with you and now I see now how surface it is I thought I was deep uh-huh I could quote scripture but I couldn't live it come on now I could come on I could judge everybody but I didn't check myself wish I had some help here and here it is here it is Simon has a defining moment and we're out Simon has a defining moment moment Simon Peter has a defining moment he's struggling with himself Jesus is seized and now the one he thought he was going to ride into glory with I'm talking about earthly glory with it they were going to finally overthrow this Roman Empire the head general is thrown in jail and he seems helpless against the people that prophecy said he was going to overthrow. Messing with his mind right now. Wait a minute, God. I thought you were the great physician. I thought you had more healing. Come on, in the hem of your garment and all the Walgreens and all the CVSs. And they're saying they can't find a vaccine or can't even agree upon a treatment. Come on, God, why don't you just give somebody, come on now, the antidote so we can get on out of this. Uh, Simon Peter uh, has a decision to make. Somebody sees him. Because remember now, watch it. Jesus is seized. He's arrested. 
and Peter is following at a distance. No, Peter, I thought you were going to be right up there on me. I thought you were going to be right up there on me. Peter follows at a distance, and then somebody spots him and says, you've been with Jesus. Because it's real hard to encounter Jesus. It's real hard to come in contact with Jesus, and something about you doesn't change. People ought to be able to recognize that you've been with Jesus. Peter says, I don't know him. A little later, somebody else saw him. Said, you one of them. Uh Uh-huh. You belong to that church, St. John Northwest. (laughs) Said, well, I did seven weeks ago. (laughs) Uh, But I didn't sign up for any of this. I I, I thought becoming a member, come on now, would kind of make me Oh, fill in the blank. <laughs> uh, uh, would kind of make me popular. Would kind of um, give me some new friends. But, but I didn't sign up for being away from a church that I finally found one that I thought the people loved me and accepted me. But I didn't sign up for this. Second time. Says, surely you were with him. Peter says, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a rooster crow moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's going to come a time, and and if we're in this thing for seven more weeks, there's going to be a rooster that's going to crow. Because maybe it'll be then... That you've decided to say deuces to God. I'm out. I didn't sign up for this. Right? Because you and I were supposed to be rolling together. You weren't supposed to be on lockdown somewhere. And then I'm out here by myself to defend myself. Anybody feeling kind of helpless like that? That that God has kind of left you to fend for yourself? But, but remember now, earlier in Luke 22, Jesus said, but I prayed for you. And that prayer just didn't last for one day. And in fact, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God right now, still interceding on our behalf. He says, I'm praying for you that your faith doesn't fail through this COVID-19 pandemic. I'm praying for you that you won't give up. I'm praying for you that you won't put your Bible underneath your bed. I'm praying for you that you'll keep clasping your hands together and bowing your head and praying unto a holy God. I'm praying for you that if you're going to reconcile relationships now is the time that you ought to do it I'm praying for you that even though the bank account looks a little shaky I'm praying that you won't go out and do anything that'll compromise your principles praying for you I know you didn't sign up for this but you're built for it we'll be back next week <laughs> we'll be back next week to give you more of what we've been thinking but didn't dare say it. And let's find out how Simon Peter fights this war on the inside of him. And then we'll find out and try to settle in how we fight this war that's going on in ourselves. Can we just do a little bit of we offer Christ to you? The truth is, that's the only thing that's going to get us through. Yeah, I know some of the things that you're tempted to do, but I want you to hold on because Jesus is interceding. He knows what's on the inside of us. He he knows how we've been made. He told Jeremiah before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I, I appointed you. So you're already built for this. I just need you to be able to see clearly beyond all the clutter. Beyond all the chaos. I need you to see that who I created you to be is still there. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's still 
is still there. And we want to offer a Christ to you that is still praying, still interceding, still walking by your side. I feel you. I'm going through that. Yeah. But here is the truth. There is not a situation that we can ever go through that Jesus hadn't already been through. Hebrews tells us that we don't have a high priest that can't sympathize with our weaknesses. But he's been tempted in every way that we've been tempted, yet without sin. I extend an invitation to you today on behalf of that same Jesus. You may be feeling out of sorts. You may be feeling as if, ah, uh, God has let you down. But we offer Christ to you today to let you know that there is a God who wants you to come in out of the cold. Wants you not to live in fear. Wants you not to live in panic. Regardless of what the circumstances look like. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for new life, not just a way out, but a new life, we'll give it to you today. Scripture tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Scripture also tells us that anyone who would call upon the name of the Lord <laughs> shall be saved. Listen, if the word has pricked your heart today and you say, you know what, I want to be a part of a church family that will just tell the truth, that, that will just come on, accept my feelings like I'm feeling them, but help me see how God looks at all of this and that God won't give up on me just because I've given up on him. So if that's you and you want to join in covenant fellowship with the body of Christ, and the body of St. John Northwest. Why don't you just text JOIN. It's there on the screen. JOIN, S-J-N-W. Text that to 281-716-5335. I think that's the number. Is that right? 281-716-5335. Text JOIN, S-J-W. They're telling me something else. 281 Nine one six five three three five. All right, all right. They're on the screen. Come on, come on. Offer Christ to you, oh my, oh my sister. He will give you. He will give you brand new life. New life. New life abundantly. Talking to you, talking to you, talking to you. Yeah. To Christ.